Today we'll look at the new features inside Photoshop 2025. Now this video is hardly day and date. The software has been out there for a few weeks, which means I've had time to evaluate things like quality, speed performance, and the all important use, nobody ever talks about this, of your AI credits. The following therefore is less me ticking off new stuff that you may or may not care about, and more of me sharing what I hope is genuinely helpful real world advice. One of my favorite recent additions to Photoshop is this guy right here, the remove tool, which just keeps getting better and better. And now we have this find distractions options that includes wires and cables and people. We'll see both, but I want to make it clear. It's not that they're miracle features or anything like that. It's just that they do the work for you automatically. So for example, in my case, I have seven power lines that are marring this scene. And normally I'd have to paint each one independently. Instead, now I can just create a new layer like so and then turn on the sample all layers checkbox that's the only thing you have to do you don't have to worry about the ai setting it's not going to use any generative ai this is local pattern recognition so in other words you're not going to waste a credit then click wires and cables and let photoshop do its thing now it is going to take a moment in my case it took about 45 seconds but it does such a great job notice that especially in the low frequency detail here inside the sky in the high frequency detail inside the tree, not so good. This is before and this is after. So it's okie dokie. And by the way, it does leave the telephone poles and the transformers and all that stuff. Now, by way of a trick, little tip actually, notice that this is an image that's it's a classic image that's marred by power lines. It'd be great if they weren't there. And so all I have to do is apply that setting and they go away like so. But is it a miracle? If you zoom in, you can see the poles right there and all also, if you want to get a sense for what modifications have actually occurred, then press the control key or the command key on the Mac and click on the thumbnail for that new layer you just created. And you can see that this area has been modified and this area has not. Now let's take a look at removing people, which is a whole different kettle of fish, if you will. I'm looking at a stock photo from the Dreamstime image library, link in the description. And I want you to see up here in the options bar that we have three mode settings. They don't apply to power lines, but they do apply to people. And so I'll go ahead and create a new layer and call it people, what the heck? Make sure sample all layers is turned on, click on find distractions and then click on people. Now this works a little differently. It's not gonna automatically get rid of the people like it did the power lines. Instead, it's going to identify them, which means I have a moment to make some modifications. For example, it, it, has, a, it has a habit of missing the shadows which is a problem if it gets rid of the people and it leaves the shadows behind don't you think and if you find this helpful by the way and you're going to then go ahead and do me a favor and subscribe and turn on notifications i'm going to press the enter key in order to get this started because even though it's going to look really good it does take some credits so you know how you have credits associated with your account you spend one credit every time you apply generative fill for three variations you only spend one credit, whereas this thing costs multiple credits. In the case of this image, it costs me three credits for one single variation. I wouldn't swear that's the way it's always gonna be, by the way, but you wanna keep an eye out. And so here's before and here's after. So it looks pretty good, but it did cost me. Now, I want you to see that there's a few different ways to pursue this. This is how things look if I turn AI off. And that just applies pattern recognition locally by the way it does not invoke ai so it doesn't call upon firefly you do not need a live internet connection blah -de -dee blah however it also does an absolutely terrible job look at that whereas here's auto we just saw that you're going to get a different result every time because it is ai but notice i went from 454 credits down to 451 and i performed this test multiple times by the way consistently spent three credits each and every time and then i turned ai on just to see if i got something different which i did and i went from 451 down to 448 credits i want you to see notice right over here that before we have some people and then after we have some more all right, now let's take a look at the more conventional generative fill and see not only how it's improved a little bit, but also how it compares to the better AI applied by the remove tool. This is key. 
by the way. And so let's say I want to get rid of this tree and I'll go ahead and select the selection brush. Easiest way to work, click up here at the top of the tree and shift click down at the bottom. No good getting rid of the tree if I don't also get rid of the shadow and might as well fix this tear in the roof. So a pretty big area. Now I'll click generative fill down here in the taskbar and I'll let her rip. And so this, I want to emphasize, as things stand now, just costs you one credit. And yet, it delivers three different variations. And here they are. So this is like it's been in the past, by the way. This is nothing new. We have a third variation that includes a door. Well, maybe I want that, maybe I don't. I'll, I'll go with this variation right here, let's say. Problem is, even though this is better gen fill than we've had before. So it used to rely on Firefly Model 1, now it's Firefly Model 3. That is hardly revolutionary for retouching, in my opinion, because we still have this problem right here. Notice, here's the original detail. I want you to pay special attention to the edges of the bricks and this these needles down here. And here's the new detail. Is it even remotely a match? No, it's not. It's totally gummy and it looks terrible. Well, we do have a fix for that kind of, in Photoshop 2025. And so notice here in the properties panel, you can click on the triple dot and try generate similar if you like. But what we want is enhanced detail. And so I'll go ahead and click on it. And that is going to invoke a progress bar. The good news is that as things stand right now, enhanced detail does not consume a credit. And so in many ways, that's a free process. This is before, by the way. And this is after, not an exact match, but a lot better than what we were seeing in the past. But that doesn't even compare to the remove tool. And so I'll go ahead and turn off that new layer and I'll create a new one and I'll just call it tree, whatever, doesn't matter. I just wanna make sure I'm painting on an independent layer. When I grab the remove tool, once again, this time you wanna set mode to gen AI on, might as well. And you wanna turn off remove after each stroke, very important. By the way, if you're going to uh, approach things this way, and now I'll go ahead and click up here at the top of the tree and shift click down here. And so if I had not turned that checkbox off, I would apply gen fill after each brush stroke, which would cost me, of course, it's only kind of cost me one credit, by the way, but still, why waste them if you don't have to? And then I'll paint away the shadow. And now I will just go ahead and press the enter key. You might have to press that key twice in a row. Hey, real quick, our boy Photoshop is by no means perfect. In fact, when I asked generative fill for soft and fluffy imaginary friend, it came up with this and this and this i just what and no please no if you want something more is he too cute clearly he is then you're gonna have to work a little harder in which case join my patreon which is patreon.com slash deep now and now back to the actual good stuff even the bad stuff can be good here in photoshop 2025 and this time you're only going to get one variation. Notice you don't have multiple variations down here in the taskbar or in the properties panel. However, note that it is better. We have a real detail match across this image. And yes, that means that you can work at a very high resolution and get a detail match out of generative fill when it's combined with a remove tool. All right, now let's take a look at the current state of generative expand, which allows you to automatically add to the width and height of an image. Very promising feature the implementation of which was not even sort of ready for prime time until now. Now it's ready for cable access, thanks to the addition of enhanced detail. And so what I'm gonna do, notice this is a very small image. I'm going to switch to the crop tool and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and I will drag down and to the left. And I'm essentially asking Photoshop to make the image four times as large, at which point I'll click generative expand and press the enter key. At which point Photoshop adds all this detail and we've have three different variations once again, and it only costs one credit. So how could I possibly have a problem with what is obviously a miraculous command until 
you take a moment to zoom in. And so notice right here, we're seeing the original detail. And so I'll just go ahead and kind of select this region. Notice the road actually goes down to here. The road is looking pretty sharp, so are the rocks. But once we get outside of this range, it's very, very murky indeed. Gummy detail, it's just horrible. It's absolutely worthless in my opinion. But now what you can do, once you come up with a variation that you like, once again, for one credit, then you can go over to the properties panel and click on enhanced detail, which is free where credits are concerned. Things are considerably improved. Notice this detail right here. This is before, see how soft and gummy it is. And this is after, so it's not a dead match or anything like that. However, it is a much better attempt than we've seen in the past. And so I would go so far, and pardon me for borrowing from Arrested Development, but I'd go so far as to upgrade this from a triple sell to a don't buy. Now, unfortunately, I can't extend that same courtesy to this next feature because I hate it. Now, technically it's new to Photoshop 2025. It's known as Generate Background, and it's not only gimmicky, but it's also badly implemented. So I'll start with this professionally captured image from Dreamstime. Click on Remove Background, which does a wonderful job of temporarily masking away the background like so. We do have some blue fringing around her hair and now I'll click generate background and I'll enter a prompt. You do need a prompt this time. So interior of luxury, private airplane, and then I'll click generate. And Photoshop communicates with Firefly and imagines these three variations for one credit. So what in the world is my problem? Well, let's choose one of these that has a little bit of contrast right here. I'll I'll zoom on in so that you can see that, of course, we've got not super gummy detail, but it could be better. And so I'll switch over to the properties panel and click once again on enhance detail. Unfortunately, it doesn't really make much of a difference. This is before, this is after, except it makes her hair look that much more brittle. And that's a function of the fact that the background is not masked into place. It just has a big hole cut out out of it, which is the worst way of implementing this feature I can imagine. So what should you do instead? Well, turn that off or throw it away or never use it. And then you can just click on this thing down here at the bottom. What I would really recommend you do is go out and get a really good stock photo and put it in the background. But I will go ahead and enter that exact same prompt. Only this time it fills the entire image window. So there's no hole cut out of it. In other words, if there are any issues with the edges around her hair, then that is a function of this layer mask, which I can edit in any way that I like. And incidentally, that last feature is getting updated to the resolution flexible generative workspace in Photoshop beta. If you're interested in seeing me cover it, just comment below and then subscribe and turn on notifications. I don't mean to get all luxury, but people frequently ask me why I haven't covered this or that. Often I have, which is the whole idea behind notifications, but see, you got to turn them on. And for at least one way to execute a degree of AI imagination that Photoshop isn't currently ready for, join me at patreon.com slash deke now, and then go to deke.com and sign up for my utterly fantastic and credit-free newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan, this is Deke Now.